You're listening to The View From Up Here, an equipping podcast by Viewpoint Leadership and Development. Our vision is to cultivate a change in the way the world views leadership and development. And our mission is to foster better leaders through a modern approach while developing individuals into their true selves. My name's Brad Walbridge, your host for our time together. And joining me in our conversations is our president and founder, Josh Trout, and our COO, Joel Archery. Welcome to the View From Up Here podcast. My name is Joel. I am the COO of Viewpoint Leadership and Development. I'm joined by our president and founder, Josh Trout, and Councilman Karium Booker. Thank you so much for being Do here. Do you notice how you went deep? Councilman. <laughs> well, he's more important. I know. That's what I'm saying. I felt like I had to be sophisticated around a politician, <laughs> right? Well, thank the, you for being here. Oh, no. Thank you. The pleasure is all mine. I really appreciate the opportunity to yeah. be here today. You are, so you're the youngest councilman currently as well as in the history of the city of Greer. Yeah, I mean, and the United States. I'm not going to quote you on that, but I will say um to our knowledge, uh I am the youngest council person to be in this the city of Greer, of course, but also uh, potentially in the history of of Greer. You think and, yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Like That's 99.9% cool. sure of the That's history. Awesome. So, <laughs> obviously, uh not everyone wakes up as a kid and goes, "I want to be on the city council." You were Greer native, though, right? Yeah. So you're born and raised, so you know the city, you know the people. Why city council? Yeah, so I, I told folks when I was running for council, I'm, I'm not a politician. If you expect me to go around making these great speeches and kissing babies, I mean, I can kiss some babies, that's fine. I like that. But <laughs> <laughs> Wait, let's scratch that. Let's no, scratch no, that. I, I, just, I, mean, I wasn't going to say anything. Like, if that's the one thing you're <laughs> focusing on, it's all right. It's a weird thing to focus on. But you're not, you're not that typical politician. That's right. Yeah. So uh, I don't. Uh, yeah, like I said, I don't claim to be a politician, and um, I'm from Greer, born and raised, been there all my life. Uh, yeah. You know, there's a statistic that says that folks typically don't, you know, uh, travel 10 miles past where they grew up. Wow. I'm um, that st- statistic. I live mm-hmm. maybe 3.5 miles from where I grew up. No way. To, the, to, to be exact. Where did you grow Like, where did you, is it weird being near where you grew up? Well, the, it's changed a lot where I grew okay. up. So I grew up on the countryside of Greer, down below BMW. So okay. back when I was growing up, that was all pastures with cows wow. and, and horses and hmm. farmland. Well, it looks a lot differently now. Um, Greer has grown. I mean, Greer is the second fastest growing city in South Carolina. Yeah. And we've gotten a robust economy, and we've created a, a nice place for folks to want to live and play. Hmm. But, um, yeah, now I actually – brought up roots in an area that my parents uh, tried to get me away from growing up. Wow. So the area I live in is called the Sunnyside Community. And the Sunnyside Community, back when my parents were raising kids, I'm the youngest of six kids, and during the 80s, which is when they were rearing yeah. their the families up, was probably the worst it, it was, you know, in the history of Sunnyside. I mean, wow. you could go down Sunnyside Drive and – um, beep the horn at somebody, you know, they'd be doing Dylan's literally mm-hmm. in the middle of the road. And uh, if you beep the horn at them, I mean, they're, they're, they'll they shoot at you. I mean, it was that bad. Wow. So my father, who grew up in Sunnyside, and my mother actually didn't grow up in Sunnyside, but she had a lot of family there. Uh, she grew up in the countryside of Greer. Well, my father decided to move his family to that country area of Greer, wow. get them away from city life, and um, try to raise a, a different different breed of folks. Hmm. So I'm very fortunate um, for that. And I think it was the best decision my parents could have made. So one of the things we've talked about a lot in this podcast is the importance of role models, mentors, people who can speak into our lives currently as as leaders and those who want to be leaders, but also how our formative years were impacted by our role models. It seems like, and it sounds like your dad was one of those. Can you talk kind of more about that? Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, my father, <laughs> if you if you hear him talk, like I said, I'm the youngest of six kids, so you can only imagine how expensive it is to have a large <laughs> family. <laughs> well, he, he wasn't a man, uh, I mean... He had big aspirations. Hmm. Um, he wanted to be an accountant. I mean, he told me how he wanted to be a politician. Uh, the, the irony. I know You're the, the one who the, became the politician. Yeah, the irony. Yeah. But he started having a family at the age of 18. Wow. So my mother got pregnant in, in um, senior year of high school. 
Um, she actually was able to graduate, but she didn't graduate at Burns High School. At, if you're pregnant, you have to go to like the career center. Wow. So he, she finished her last year out at the career center. And uh, my father, uh, he had plans of becoming an accountant, started school at Greenville Tech to try to make his way through that. But, um, you know, going through the family life, he had to abandon those ideas. Hmm. And, I mean, if you, like I said, if you listen to him talk, he says, uh, I don't know, I was at work. <laughs> 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 and if I go back and think about it, I mean, uh, like let's say I had a basketball game. Yeah. Um, it was like a... <laughs> It was like a special treat to see my dad show up. I was like, wow. oh, my goodness, he's yeah. here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm yeah. not in a bad way, yeah, but, yeah. It's, you know, he worked that hard. I mean, he had all kind of uh, things he needed to do to su- provide for our family. Yeah. Hmm. And I tell folks, um, you know, I actually went to private school, hmm. uh, and it wasn't because we were – had all this money in the world it was the philanthropic folks that were willing to see this family that had all this potential and they saw something in these children to allow them to go to to private schooling Mm. i mean i'm a recipient of uh food uh food assistance from the food bank i mean um back during the 90s a big thing was to go and uh, pick up a cardboard Mm. so folks would take their truck go to like Sears and Roebuck or to different places like Dillard's and put all the cardboard on the truck, wet it down and take it to uh, a recycling place. And that would be side money. Hmm. Well, at three years old, I was riding around with my dad on the side. You know, that was his side gig was to ride around and get cardboard before he would go to work in the evenings. Hmm. So uh, but things like that, those are things that shape my life. Hmm. Seeing folks um, working hard and not really allowing the adverse, you know, the adversity of society uh, mm. hold yeah. them back. Yeah. Wow. That's, and I, w- one thing that sticks out to me with that is you learned resilience from your father's resilience, mm. right? And like he modeled the resilience that you show, but also uh, you, you didn't spurn anyone who was willing to help you out, right? Like, and I think that happens a lot too with people who are self-made, who are resilient. I don't need the help don't give me a handout, right? They don't, but I think because you learned also that receiving generosity is also a, a sign of humility, that I think that's one of the reasons why you are so humble and you're so successful as a councilman. Because when, when we chatted, I mean, you and I met uh, through Rick Danner, right? And then through people like, um, you know, we've got Mark Hopper, who's a councilman, uh, and then... Lee Dumas. Lee Dumas, mm-hmm. yeah, like, and we've we've met that way, and one of the things that we chatted about when we were meeting was just... I could always tell from what you were saying that you were just a genuine, mm-hmm. humble person, and you're unassuming. And it's not in a you're you're not a force of a, of a nature of a kind of person. You're just meek, and that's not weakness. No. Nope. And I think when a leader has meekness, and they learn that through the generosity of others, being humbled by that, I think that's really cool. And and so you're, you what you said is your dad showed you that, and then you learned that. And so the question though is, how do you? How do you think you're kind of living that out as a councilman? Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, um, you know, the first the first step when I became on council, I said, okay, I need to understand what this community is about, the area that I represent. And just to give you some information about the area I represent, it's a low to moderate income area, uh, predominantly minority, and all the help organizations are in my district. So you've got Greer Relief, you have the Soup Kitchen, you have the Housing Authority Properties. And I, I, I jokingly laugh with some of our council folks. I say, my calls look a lot different than your calls. <laughs> uh, you may get calls about potholes and right. things on your yard. I get a call of a woman crying about how she's getting ready to lose her place to yeah. live and what can she do about it. Um, and, you know, I tell folks, that's, I've, I've adopted the policy. I said, well, I can't give you money, but this is what I can do. Mm. And we have multiple resources around the city of Greer, and I'm fortunate to be able to connect those folks to those resources. But, yeah, you hit the nail on the head. I mean, growing up, my, my father instilled in us the, the value of knowing to when to ask for help. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, it, you know, being an African-American growing up in Greer, Greer has changed a lot. Right. I mean, yes. Yes. <laughs> it changed a lot. Yeah. We're not locals, but we hear We've about heard. it all the yeah. time. Yeah. Yeah. So um, in, in some respects, Greer was ran by the same faithful few and – you know, now if you look at Greer in 2023, it is a very progressive, inclusive co- community. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you know that is 
just knowing that, like, like my father was telling us, you know, knowing what the glass ceiling is. I mean, it's it was a real thing in Greer. Yeah. And getting on council, you know, um, I've done a lot of good things in my life. I mean, I've been fortunate to, uh, you know, I tell folks a little history about me. I started school when I was at four years old. Hmm. One by necessity because my dad needed to get me out of the truck. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. <fine. laughs> and two because they they felt like I was prepared. Hmm. But then also I skipped the eighth grade, wow. so I went from seventh grade to ninth grade, wow. and then I graduated high school at sixteen years old. So, Jeez. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> I wish I, I yeah yeah okay that's impressive. Yeah, I was not ready for that. <laughs> well, and most folks don't know that about me, and I. And I tell folks that sometimes just to tell them that uh, the mind can do a lot of things. Mm. And if you put your, your you know hard work and dedication can get you a long ways. But even throughout all those things that I've done, I mean, uh, of the ventures that I've, you know, ventured on, uh, I still felt like there was a glass ceiling for me. And I was hitting that glass ceiling every day. And I was telling my wife, I was like, you know, I think this is it. You know, mm. Before I got on council. Right. Well, um, I decided to run for, for politicians, one, because I had a young family, and I said, uh, was talking to our former representative, and I was like, these are some of the things I think the community wants to see, and you know, his, he would always brush it off. Well, I said, told my wife, I was like, um, you know, we really need to do something about yeah. this. I mean, I'm tired of seeing this happen. I'm tired of seeing that happen. And I think if we have the right leadership in place, we could really make some changes in our community. And my wife was like, uh, I'm not really for you running for council, but uh, we'll see where it goes. Yeah. So I ran it as a community-based campaign. Okay. Um, literally every dollar we brought in, I would say literally every dollar, but not literally every dollar. Because okay. you still it's have. Pol- it's politicians yeah. speak. It's Someone okay. got me on that one time. I was talking to a lady. She said. Fact checker. Yeah, yeah. She fact checked me. She was like, Do you have that in writing? Oh <laughs> I was like, Let me see the You don't have to worry about that yeah. with us. Yeah. <laughs> so a lot of the money we brought in uh, went back to the community, whether it was we gave over seven, 700 backpacks with school supplies. Wow. I mean, we had fish fries. We had uh, gave away hot dogs. We gave away t shirts, yep. all kind of stuff. Uh, we gave it back to the community. I told my wife, I said, um, even if I don't win this election, I still want to make make it seem like I had an impact in some way, so cool. in some regard in our community. Mm. Um, so election time came out, and I won by 16 votes to a 24-year incumbent. Wow. But, wow. you know, at the end of the day, we still won. But, but yeah, that resounding of asking for help has been – a moniker of what I've done so far. I mean, we've got projects in our community that are in the pipeline. I mean, we had a announcement. I got an email from one of uh, the groups, you know, in, in Greenville, and he was congratulating me on some funding that we received. Huh. I was like, what is he talking about? I mean, I knew about something that, that we had applied for yeah. that, that was going to happen in my area. But come to find out, this this grant that we received was the largest grant in history of this organization and is going to fund a project um, in city of Greer that's not only going to help that low to moderate income area, but also be a, uh, be a bridge between that area to downtown. Yeah. Well, so can amazing. you share about that or no? Can it you? is public. Uh, it's called the Wards Creek nature trail, uh, the Wards Creek nature trail. The initial donation we received was from the ports authority uh, they donated fifty thousand cool. dollars towards mm-hmm. it, yeah. And then from there, we we said, okay, we've got some momentum here. We've brought on to, been talking with Upstate uh, uh, Trees Upstate, been talking with uh, Ugata, which is the Upstate Trails Association, yeah. um, GPAD, so a bunch of different organizations, just telling them, hey, this is something that we could make happen, and it will be a great thing for the community hmm. that well, you know. Hasn't seen much yeah. happen in their area. Wow. wow, that's amazing! Congratulations. No, one thing I I really enjoyed listening to you speak about, and I think strong leaders can do this is you put yourself aside, mm-hmm. right? You've mentioned community a lot, and you've, you've mentioned even how you did your campaign. You know that says a lot about you and your character. Um, so kudos to you on that, number one. But um, that also makes things a little bit more difficult at times as well. So um, the fact that you were able to do that and you you identified that you had you had a personal agenda, right? 
that you wanted to do, but you put that secondary to what was best for the community. And, and that, that says a lot. So I, I want to applaud you on that. No, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you, your, res, your resilience, your humility, uh, I love that it's not, it's, it's, continues to be in the forefront in an altruistic way, right? Mm-hmm. Like, it, you know, you even have the, the your your other business or your other job is mm-hmm. a contracting business that you started. And I think that's mm-hmm. one of the most uh, on the nose in a good way things that you could be doing. Because if, <laughs> you, I mean, you literally went for counsel because you said, and we had someone on our podcast mm-hmm. earlier that was said, well, I think I can do it better than other people. Not in a bad way, but right. I think I can do it better. Let me put my money where my mouth is. And you've literally done that with the council. But then mm-hmm. I love that you have a contracting business mm-hmm. on the side. And that's literally the same thing. It's like, yeah, I can do this for you. Mm-hmm. And I think I could do it better than other people. And let me do this for you. And I, I think it's just so cool that you, all that you're doing is a perfect encapsulation of who you are and mm-hmm. your character and your and your drive. How do you, do you find any like correlation between the contracting and the council or anything? Well, see, I... I I'm an engineer by trade, so yeah. my mind is always wanting to make things better and always want to fix something. So <laughs> knowing that, and it's actually a fluke. I'll tell you the story of how that contract and business <laughs> happened. So I've always wanted to. Uh, so my parents, when they bought a house, uh, they just they all they could afford was the the house and the shell. You know, the outside wow. was done, but the inside wasn't done at all. So through the years, we had to go in and put the paneling up, put the flooring in. And at at first it started out with paneling and, you know, some simple carpet. And then a few more years down the road, they would switch the carpet out to, you know, that peel and stick vinyl tile. Mm -hmm. And then after a while that would come off. So glad that went away. So So then ultimately they worked themselves up to be able to put hardwood floors through the house and then work their way up to take the paneling down, put sheetrock up. But this was all being done by me, my dad, and my brothers to get this done. Well, trial and error, uh, we ended up getting all this stuff done, and people would call, mainly me, I guess because I was the one most accessible, accessible than my brothers, but they would call me and say, mm-hmm. hey, um, I'm moving out of my house. Can you come help me out? I mean, this started when I was 13 years old. Wow. Hmm. So they would come pick me up in their truck or whatever. We'd go move, uh, go move stuff and uh, – help them put down flooring and stuff like that. But it ended up turning into uh, a side gig. Hmm. So I would get calls from folks. And um, at one point I had a a landscaping business. And uh, so. Can you do my yard? (laughs) <laughs> I gave that up. for what you said. Yeah. I, need to get, I need to get in contact with anyone you know for that. Sorry, yeah. keep going. So I sold the landscaping business Thank like last year to a guy that I, I knew. Is he but, good? Yeah, he's good. Okay, good. Yeah, okay. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll talk. We, yeah, we'll talk. Um, but, but yeah, it was, it was like just throughout the years, it yeah. just got bigger and bigger and bigger. You know, the landscaping <clears> business <throat> started out like two or three yards. And then by word of mouth, like I was up to 50 yards. And then by word of mouth, I was up to 100 yards. Wow. I was like literally just side gig yeah. type thing. Yeah. Well, I said, told my wife, I said, I really need to formalize some stuff. And so then I created up with Booker's Home Services, Ooh. where it's done by the book every time. Oh, that is. <laughs> like it. That's that good. That is good. <laughs> That's good. That is good. We need Booker's Home Service to sponsor this podcast. Yes. Just give like a dollar so yes. then I can say, sponsored by Booker's Home Service, where it's. <laughs> It's done by the book every time. I just is that yeah. just flows off of the tongue. But until then, who do we have that we oh, can talk about? As the sponsor of this as podcast a, of this show, of, yeah. Uh it's the place we're in right now. What's it called? I think Sit and Spin Sit Studios. And Spin. Where is it located? Greenville, South Carolina, I think. Right? Yeah, and is it what can it do? What what type of things do they do? Everything you Every need. Podcast? I mean podcasts, uh, you can full album re- full record? albums. Uh, are, don't they have a new high, space? Aren't they really class. like reno- they renovating? It is so beautiful. They're they they are actually making it ten times better than it was when they we first that's started. That's impossible. It's so nice. I'm telling you, that's all talented. And these they offer are. these to every like full package? Full package deal. Wow, that's incredible. Yeah. If you're in the area or you're not even close. Suck it up. Come down here. <laughs> it's the upstate. Sit and spin studios. Continuing on though. So <laughs> to you, our future. Yes, exactly. Sponsor. So you had the yes, sir. Future sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> so on the nose. Uh, I so have you, to run that through my wife. She's my yeah. accountant. She but seems, make she seems nice. Well, yeah, we, we met. Yeah. 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 So what I, I really think though, it's it's so cool that you're talking. So you had this side business, and what we've talked about this a lot when it comes to business, so much is about filling your funnel, and once yeah. your funnel gets 
full, like then you can start turning people down because, but it's so hard to yeah. get your funnel full. Mm -hmm. And then we had, we had a conversation with Thornton Curry a few podcasts ago where he talked about how people want that, I want to have made it, but they're not even here yet. They haven't right. put in the work. And I love that your life is just like, if I could give someone the dictionary definition of resilience, yeah. continuing doing the next right thing, and then you'll make it. It, that's you because yeah. like you said well if it started out as two yards then it was 50 then it was 100 then i sold the business mm. i mean come, that's literally that's everyone's <laughs> business dream it's yeah. like make it happen go big sell it yeah right so what do you what drives you though i mean with someone that's so successful like you what there's gotta be something that's driving you i've met so many people that's been in my corner hmm. throughout the years i mean it's just so many it was my parents my uh grandparents um i mean is folks that I've met throughout the years in schooling that just said, you know, you can do a lot of things. I'm like, oh, I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I usually say is I appreciate that. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, uh, I had to come to the realization because I was getting weighed down at times. You know, if you've got a lot of things going yeah. on, you can get yeah. weighed down. And, you know, I had to get to the point to understand that not every seed that I plant is for me to tend. Mm. So... That's how I ended up selling the business because I said, okay, I've grown this. Let me, it might be time for me to disembark and do something else. Yeah. And it opened up so much time for a family and so much more time for counsel and, and the job that I do now. But I apply a lot of principles. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm a Christian. So mm -hmm. a lot of biblical pr principles that I, that I apply to my life. And Matthew chapter 8 talks about seek ye first the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. So first I seek God, and then, you know, he's my guiding pilot, and then mm -hmm. here you go, all these things he's adding to you because yeah. you're intentional about um, the mission of the Great Commission. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, go out into the world. <laughs> and I don't run around telling folks I'm a Christian, but right. there it says, by the, your fruits you will know them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, people see that my fruit is different than a lot of other folks that they see, especially for politics. Yeah, yeah. politics can become very divisive and can be very, uh, <laughs> very evil in some cut ways. Yeah. Oh yeah, cutthroat, yeah. backstabbing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Fill in the blank with those, <clears throat> any synonym. Yeah. yeah. So people are like you're you're different. You're doing this for the right reason. It's like, well, I have nothing else to lose. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. Well. well to, to some regard. Yeah, yeah. Good for you. Yeah. You know, my intentions are solely to see folks thrive. And people ask, well, when are you going to get your cut? I'm like, well, what are you talking about? My cut is seeing people succeed. Mm. And the Lord and all these things will be added unto you. Eventually, mm. the Lord will take care of me. Yeah. And he truly mm. has done that all my life. Amazing. I, this this is why we do this podcast, <laughs> yes. right? I mean, some people have asked why we do the podcast. What's the why behind right. Viewpoint? And one of the great things we love about this podcast, yes, sure, it builds the brand of Viewpoint, but right. moreover than that, a hundred times over, it's highlighting people like Karium, yeah. who are living out the things that we are trying to tell you, this is what you need to do to be a successful leader. You're having issues at your work, or you feel stuck, or you feel blocked. This is the type of person you should model your leadership right. style out, your life after. And and it's not uh, try to be Karium Booker perfectly, it's just, hey, He's he has done this, done the work, and shown up. And then, like you said, you're 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 going for a higher calling. Your identity is secure in Christ, not in the work that you're doing, even as a council member. And because it's secure, you can live with freedom because you're not insecure. You're not paranoid. You're not worried about power hungry, grabbing, trying to keep everything okay. And that's leadership. That's effective leadership yeah, right there. I love absolutely. that. Absolutely. Kudos to you. Josh, Thank what you. about you? I mean, you're you're a CEO of a hospital. Yeah. You've been a leader for a long time. When you hear someone like Karim, who's a younger guy than you, mm -hmm. like what what do you feel? What do you think when you look at him hearing him talk? I, I just smile. I'll be honest with you. You know, I, I love uh, my stories very much like yours as well. Um, you know, I, I grew up in a family. We were poor. We, uh, you know, I'm one of the few in my family has a degree, let alone an advanced degree. And um, nothing was just handed to me. You know, and I think there's there's a lot of work that you have to put in to your life, um, you know, assisted by obviously our, our Lord and Savior, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, He's the one that's got a plan for you. You just got to go for it, right? You got to follow where He's putting you. Um, but you know, there's a lot of hard work and dedication to put in that. And I think that you've done that. And I want to say kudos to you because 
as, as somebody that's in leadership and somebody that's into developing people, you are the poster child yeah. <laughs> of what I would want to see in anybody that I interview or I work with, right? Um, but it's, it's hard for a lot of people. You put that time and effort into it. There's a lot of people, and you've mentioned that earlier, how there's kids that come out of uh, college that are here but want to be here. And they don't want to go through this part like you and I have and, and, and Joel has done in our, in our lifetime, right? Um, and I think that hearing your story, you know, is, is just a prime example of that. And I think there's going to be a lot of listeners that, number one, might not believe in themselves that they can do something. Yeah. But maybe those people that are stuck out of college that wants to have that VP job right away, <laughs> that they may be hearing and saying, you know what, maybe I'm looking at things a little bit differently, yeah. right? You got to put the time in, you got to put the effort in. But most importantly, one thing that you have shown through your success is it's not about you. Yeah. Right? You're doing things for two different reasons. You're doing things to, to, to please your, your Lord and Savior, right? And, and do his calling and his work. But you're also putting people around you in your community, those people that you love, first, yeah. right? And, and that, that is where your success is coming from. So I just, kudos to you. I mean, it's, it's not easy to be like that, you know, especially in today's world, <laughs> yeah. you know? And, and, when you, and then when you throw on top of all that, you're in politics <laughs> and you're right, you're different. You know, and that goes a long way. And I think that we're we're in a very vital time in our life yeah. right now. I mean, politics is disgusting. Well, I, just, you know, I, I'm laughing. You remember when we were at that event? And yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You don't even have to know. It's no, an inside series. Yeah. yeah, you are the opposite of the Complete that experience opposite. we had. Yeah, at so an event. we won't go there. <laughs> um, but you know, and it doesn't matter what side you're on. It's all a mess. Yeah, all of it. And we need more people like you to represent us. That they're doing it for the right reason, yeah. and you can see it, you can feel it, you can believe in it, and I'm going to put my trust in you. You know what yeah. I mean? So that's the, cool. I mean, well, your faith is so integral, and it's yeah. integral to both of us. And you have the what? Literally in Scripture, it says the greatest commandment is love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. Yeah. And then the second one is just like it: mm-hmm. love your neighbor as yourself. Right. Which is what you're doing, and then. I would say one plus one equals Karium success, right? It's not, <laughs> yeah, yeah. it's not hard to look at it and be like, how did Karium do all the things he's yeah. doing? Mm-hmm. Uh, pretty simple. But what about the future excites you about Greer? Mm. There's so many things that excite me about the future of Greer. I mean, we have a great council. I mean, uh, we have You're not a, biased at all in any way. Uh, yeah, well, <laughs> I was before I got on there, but I've had a year to make my uh, <laughs> opinion. <laughs> And to be honest with you, we really have a, a good, yeah. thoughtful council that really cares about Greer. Yeah. Um, Mayor Danner, he he really cares about Greer as well. Mm-hmm. And uh, I mean, we 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 agree on a lot of things. Yeah. And on how to get there is really ha- is the question of of what what's going to transpire. But Greer, we're the second fastest growing city in South Carolina. Yeah. So uh, the way you see Greer today. Um, Enjoy it because it's going to change. <laughs> I mean, I mean, <laughs> wasn't it like uh, I don't know if it's Greenville and Greer, but or Greenville County, twenty people are moving there a day. Yes, yeah, yeah. in the county, yeah, in the county, mm-hmm. Greenville County, twenty people a day. Yeah, and we straddle two counties, Spartanburg County and Greenville yeah. County. Ooh. That's a good point. <laughs> yeah, so you can only imagine the amount of folks. A uh, third of Greer lives in Spartanburg County, and we'll probably see the Spartanburg County double within the next. 10 to 15 yeah, years. Yeah, especially that northern part, Boiling Springs area. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. So, um, so what, what's something that you would, you know, that's not happening or you, it's, mm-hmm. but like a dream you'd mm-hmm. have? What, if you could have a five year, mm-hmm. 10 year dream for Greer, what would yeah. be something that, man, if this could happen, yeah. that'd be great? So, <laughs> the nature trail that I, I mentioned, I think it'd be a great gateway for our community. And second, um, Greer, we're going to be more intentional about. Uh, creating spaces outside of downtown. So we're double downing on recreation, mm-hmm. creating opportunities for folks to enjoy because we're over 25 square miles. You right. can't have everybody come to your downtown center and expect them. Uh, no, because yeah. the parking's terrible right now. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that is one thing that I really want to see. I want to continue to see um, and us cultivate families, um, the area that I represent, and I'm just going to be honest, I mean, it's crime is 35% higher in my district than mm-hmm. the rest of Greer. Wow. Um, we're, I'm intentional about changing that number, and it's, mm-hmm. a, it's solely because of folks and children in general, they don't have the idol, what is it, the idol mind is the devil workshop? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. We oh, yeah. have a lot of devil workshops going on mm-hmm. in, in my area, 
And I need to be intentional about making sure that we're bringing the bringing opportunities for kids mm-hmm. to to enjoy life, yeah. to be able to go outside and enjoy themselves. So, so let me let me ask you, you know, how can we as members of your community, right? Because yeah. we both live in Greer. How can we assist you in something like that? How, how what? Because it's not all on you. Yeah. Right. There's those people that live there that have a responsibility to make the correct changes. Right. You as their leader. Mm-hmm. Right. But how does the rest of the community? How can we step in a position to assist that as well? Yeah. So, I mean, that is a great question, and uh, the easiest thing that folks can do is seek out those organizations like Greer Community Ministries. Uh, Greer Relief, Mm -hmm. that volunteer time goes a long ways. I mean, uh, some folks don't have time to dedicate, Mm -hmm. but you Mm -hmm. had some some folks may have money that they can dedicate because those resources are getting disseminated to the community. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm very intentional about uh, finding those organizations Mm -hmm. and that are wanting to help the community. Community and how do we scale it? Right. Uh, We have a after school program that I'm that I'm working with. Uh, he started out with, I think, 20 kids. Now mm-hmm. he's up to almost 60 kids. Wow. Wow. And they meet every day after school hmm. at for at-risk youth, and they have a program that is solely dedicated to pouring into these children. Yeah. Now, um, he's not necessarily a ministry-based. Uh, and I, I tell folks that you don't have to have ministry in your name. Right. Sure. Because ministry isn't always about Jesus, per se, because there's moral principles that you can instill in somebody that is not controversial. Yeah, right. So I go ahead and address that and get that elephant out. Yeah, Yeah. get the elephant out the room out the room and yeah. say, you know, no, we're not Christian based, right, right. but we're still instilling uh, yeah. those moral principles 100%. that you want to have in a good person. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you know, so just kind of to bring it to today, right? So you, you see a lot going on in the communities, you know, you see everything that's going on in Chicago right now yeah. uh, with uh, just a lot of young people yeah. and a lot of crime Right in a lot of areas, mm. based on just kind of what's happening in in our in, in America right now, and you said thirty five percent more crime happens in downtown Greer or in your, in your district. Mm. How do you think we combat that? Mm. That is a great question. Not asking too. you for your solution, like <laughs> yeah. you know, all right, solved. Car and Booker did it. Let's like, but you know, what what do you think would help us combat that? What would definitely help combat that is getting folks out of a situation that makes them feel like. There is no other way. Mm. Mm. Folks are turning to crime because they don't, they feel like, one, it's learned behavior because that's all they're seeing. Right. I mean, where my kids are are raised, uh, if I look across the street, um, not necessarily at my house, but my mother-in-law's house, uh, there's a an area where things are happening and you look at the kids and it's like, well, if that's all they're seeing. Yeah. How you expect them to do any better? Yeah, yeah. So mm-hmm. one of the things that I do personally is like on a nice day, or we meet every second Tuesday on, for council. I'll walk through the community, and people are like, "You just walk through the community?" Yeah, I'm not scared of the folks. I mean, right. there's really good people here. Yeah. But if you have to be an example, they have to see yeah. things that they don't typically see. So I'm mm-hmm. walking through the community. I'm. Uh, coming up with innovative ways. One of the things that our police department, I'm glad that they've invested more heavily in, is uh, they have like basketballs and footballs. If they're riding through the community, awesome. they literally just get out and start you playing ball. You guys have ball. a great police force. Yeah, we really do. Well, really I mean, do. how many of those videos have always gone viral? Yeah. Where police officers yeah. play with mm-hmm. you yeah. know at-risk youth. I'm like, yeah. it's not that hard. Yeah. yeah. So then when they show up, every it's not on a call of something happening. Right. You right. know, they are creating a relationship with these people. Yeah. Uh, and that's one of the things that I want folks to see is um, you really have to change the narrative. Yeah. Mm. Because the narrative mm. is very strong that the police is out to get you. Right. Politicians right. are out to to uh, get get over on you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. And there's a narrative in Greer that you know, we care about our people, we care yeah. about our families, and we want you to enjoy yeah. where you're living. Yeah. And that, there, that that is a true narrative. I mean, there, you really feel that about the city of Greer. And that, I think that that's something that we want to do with Viewpoint. Um, and we have a gentleman by the name of Elvis that, that does stuff with us. Um, you know, we need to figure out how to change that narrative, right? Yeah. And I think that um, sometimes it's harder for someone like me to go into a different community that mm-hmm. I don't look like them, 
right for them to listen to to what my thought and process is on things right so we need we need to show a, a united front of all kinds right and we need to go in these communities and we need to start helping these people because you got to think about this right you were blessed with a great family mm -hmm. right and look at the success you've had there's a lot of people that don't have that and it's a generational issue right yeah. that and, and sometimes you have parents that will actually tell you you'll never be anybody because mm -hmm. of who you are right and you're setting them up for failure and we need to when i say we all of us yeah need to step up to the plate and show these kids because they that's where it needs to start right yep you can do something and i just want to say to you not only are you representing your area in your seat as council but who you are as a human being yeah I want you to know that you are playing such a vital role in these people's lives because yep. look what you're doing. And we're not just buttering them up. This is no. not, we're not buttering, this is no, no, by, genuine. No, by no means. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, by no means, you know, and, and it's. He didn't pay us to yeah. do this for his, you know, reelection you know, campaign. You know, because my heart goes out to a lot of these these kids because it's, that's yep. all they know. Yep. It's learned right. Behavior, and like and then society is like, Pfft. you know, it's Write just, they're going to be, you know, criminals. Well, no, they don't need to be criminals. Yeah. You need people to step up and say, you don't, this doesn't have to be your path. And I think the biggest part, and while we're doing with Viewpoint, is in doing this podcast so people can hear stories like yours, mm -hmm. you can do it. Yeah, We all had different stories. You know, I should not, I've said this how many times, I should not be where I'm at today. I should not be a CEO of a hospital, let alone a president of my own company. It shouldn't happen if you knew my, back, my background. Yep. Mm -hmm. But somebody helped me to realize that I can. But you got to put the work into it. Yeah. So I think that we would love to help you guys in the city, and especially you, um, to make that change. Yeah. You know, and that's why I think it's important. And I know when I end, end it with this is for my side is it it is about what can we do to help you, right? I think sometimes we look at politicians like you ran for it; it's your problem. <laughs> you fix it. Yeah. Right. This man can't do it by himself. Nope. You know, so those of you that live in the city of Greer, like we all do, we need to step up the plate as well. And and I'm. I'm very fortunate for the partnerships we've created thus far. I mean, Clemson announced uh, maybe a few months back that yeah. they're wanting to invest in Greer. And I'm wow. in it's heavily great. conversation with those folks to say, uh, you, know, you know, what what can we be doing? Yeah. Um, I mean, we have a, a very robust uh, ministries in Greer. Yeah, oh yeah. Um, yeah. I'm, I wanted to get more inclusive of both parties, but uh, – you know, you got to take baby steps. You do. Yeah. And as you continue to build contacts and mm -hmm. continue to build credibility mm -hmm. with folks that know this is all we're asking is show up every now and again. Mm. So, you know, we had a tomorrow we're going to be doing it's Earth Day. So we're going to be doing a huge uh, litter pickup. And I tell folks, um, you know, your organization has five. This organization has two or three. Mm -hmm. And by the time you know, we've got 22 people picking up a roadway. Yeah. And it's, you know. Getting up trash and beautifying the area. Yeah, and so then you. Fourteen. <laughs> yeah. And then we have folks uh, in the community. Yeah. So we we plant we had trees upstate did the largest tree planting since two thousand eight in in my district in in mm. their history mm. it happened um, last year uh, for Arbor Day. Well, since that tree planting in this community, it's a mixed community with elderly and with kids mm -hmm. and single family homes. Mm -hmm. um, They've been actively having events. Mm -hmm. So wow. like Easter, they these folks didn't know their neighbors. Like they didn't know yeah. who they were living yeah. with. But there's been some folks in the community that have latched on to this idea of uh, it takes a village. Yeah. And we have parents in the community, single moms mm -hmm. uh, coming together saying, oh, let's have an Easter egg hunt. Let's do this. Let's mm -hmm. do that. And that's how you relieve the pressure for me because, like I said, I can just call them up and say, okay, this is what's going on. What do you need? Yeah, I can get the fire department or our police yeah. department to show up. Well, yeah, of course. Uh, so that's that's the things that people mm. can realize Great. is it doesn't take much effort. I yeah. mean, and you don't have to make it your whole life. Right. Wow. But you, you, can, you can be that spark and mm. then help have other folks kind of carry that way mm. and you know kind of like that seed that's being planted it may mm -hmm. not be for you to watch grow mm -hmm. but at least you planted the seed and then next thing you know you've got johnny appleseed going on and that's trees it. everywhere wow. Amen. well uh Karium, it, it's been such a pleasure to have yes. you on here uh obviously if anyone wants to get in, in contact with you on linkedin or mm -hmm. 
Do you, you don't really have a website for council members? I do have do? a board. Yeah. So I wow. was the first council person in Greer to have a website. Uh, wow. You are, you are the youngest councilman. That makes sense, actually, that the young guy would have the website. Is yeah. it, so what's your website? So my website is bookerforgreercc.com. Booker for Greer CC. Okay. Dot com. Dot com. Yeah. And oh. you can go on there. You can find out more information about me, about my family. You can reach out to me through the website, find out some of the events we did. If you so inclined to donate, there's oh. a tab for that. <laughs> uh, I had to put it in there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't be a politician without have it. Have to. Wouldn't be well, a... I got to get more t-shirts. Right? No, that's fair. That's fair. That's right. Because it They're all goes cheap. back to the community. They're that's cheap. right. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you so much for being on this podcast. Yes. As always, subscribe, hit the notification bell on YouTube, subscribe on all the places that you listen to podcasts. But thank you so much for listening. I hope you have a wonderful day. See you guys. Yeah.